In today's video, we are going to talk about Sir Alexander von Humboldt. Well, he was a scholar of great versatility. His contributions were immensely important in the various fields, such as geology, botany, geology, physics, chemistry, anatomy, physiology, history, climatology, and many more. Humboldt was born in an aristocratic family in poor Russia. His father expired when he was only 10 years age. Uh, after getting education in classical languages, economics, history, technology, and mathematics, Humboldt started his career in the army. Later on, he studied on Frankfurt in the University of Gottington, where he studied botany, geology, and mineralogy. He was taught by A.G. Warner, a famous geologist who put forward with the hypothesis that all the sedimentary rocks of the earth had been formed by precipitation underwater and had been deposited in layer. He became keenly interested in the rock structure of the Alps and visited Bravia, Austria, Switzerland, Italy. And he also started different kind of rocks because A.G. Warner was his influence. Now let's talk about his work. He coined the term cosmography and divided it into two parts, geography and uranography. Basically, uranography is a descriptive astronomy, celestial bodies. It is related to cosmos or cosmic thing. And geography, as we all know, it is mostly based on terrestrial things. And in 1845, Cosmos was published and it is translated into several languages and Cosmos is a big revolution in the field of geography because because Cosmos was about the expedition he did later on we will talk about that later and another book which was very famous as you can see over here, this is the first front page of Isai Le Geography des Plantes. Basically, this book is based on, it was in 1805 it was published and it is also translated in various languages. It, it, this book is specifically about various kind of species of plants and animals. During his expedition, uh, he discovered a lot of plant species and animals which includes electric eel as well now let's talk about his expedition which is the most important thing in his life cycle and he contributed so many things in so many subjects well Humboldt had a gift for exceptionally sharp observation and in field work he was unsuppressed. In 1798, Humboldt along with a French botanist, A. Bonplant, reached Madrid. On his way to Madrid, he made daily observations of temperatures and altitudes. He was the first to make an accurate measurement of the elevation of the Spanish meseta. From Madrid, Humboldt and Bonplant reached Cumana port in Venezuela. Well, before his expedition, in his diary, which was found later on, he wrote these things. Intention of this expedition was basically, the first thing is collect plants and animals. As you can see later on, he, he uh, published a book on it. And the second point is analyze heat, electricity, and magnetic component of the atmosphere. And the third part is measurement of the mantles. And the most important thing is he has very few instruments in his journey, such as a telescope, six stands, kinometers. Kinometers are basically for the measurement of blueness of the sky. And barometers. That's it. With only these things, he tried to measure the temperature and altitude, ground pressure, winds, latitude, longitude, elevation above the sea level, magnetic uh, vibration, nature of rocks. 
and this is a map which is showing his five year of expedition and mostly his expedition was based on Amazon region. So his true purpose of expedition is to investigate the interaction of all the forces of nature in other words must found about the unity of nature later on he talked about his unity of nature in the book of cosmos now let's talk about his discoveries basically he explored the length of orinoco river which was 1700 miles this journey he made fantastic new discoveries for an example he was the first explorer to witness the preparation of curare plant from red indian for poisoned arrow and also he recognized cinchona tree as we all know the byproduct of cinchona tree is quinine which is a cure for malaria and another discovery of his that he discovered the ocean current which limits the rainfall on the coast of peru later on named the humble current as his name and also he discovered many new species of plant and animal as you can see i have given a list of various plant and animals that he discovered on that journey on that five year expedition and later on he published those species in this book now let's talk about another discovery he climbed the highest volcano mountain then it was highest highest volcano mountain Chimborazo so that he can calculate air pressure he, he was also the person who discovered the law of decrease in mean temperature with the increase in elevation above the sea level and this is a picture that shows the various trees the various plants he observed while climbing this mountain and these are the various names and according to those names he made a taxonomy of it well uh, another very important discovery of alexander von humboldt was along the way he measured shape of the land its temperature air pressure and the various strength of magnetic fields by connecting the features of identical temperatures he created contour map with lines of similar temperature and he named it as isotherm as we know today isotherm is a very important part of meteorological mapping so isotherm was first discovered or or invented by humboldt he was the pioneer of the visualization of data he made maps of isotherms magnetic field crustal thickness which were very very important later on in his book cosmos he propounded a theory as an unity of nature which is basically the correlationship between in, in inter, uh, environment and its influences so in cosmos what we know today uh, later on ernest haeckel was greatly influenced by humboldt and he later on um, named this particular unity of nature term as ecology but alexander von humboldt wanted to he was the pioneer person to discover or to recognize the fact that there is a correlationship between environment and and the biodiversity and that is why he is a founder of biogeography and by his discoveries darwin was greatly influenced and once darwin said that alexander von humboldt was another son of his knowledge later on darwin also followed the same path and went to amazon and then origin of the species came out and unfortunately the year origin of the species specifically it was 1859 uh, that came out and alexander von humboldt was no more exactly on that year he died so alexander von humboldt is a person that history does not give as credit as he needed because he was the person he was so popular in his time it is said that even napoleon wasn't that much popular as he used to be 
people came from various countries to uh, to sit through his lectures and to hear his expedition stories and all and uh, alexander von humble discovers so many features plants and species name as you have seen in the list uh, these are the various geographical features that named after humboldt as in humboldt bay humboldt current humboldt glacier as you can see and these are the various place names that humboldt it was named after humboldt these are the name of astronomical features because he also predicted many meteor shower on that time and these are the various universities and colleges and humboldt university in berlin is one of the most prestigious one karl ritter was later on the hod of this university of berlin so if you find this video informative please like share and subscribe so that i know you guys support me thank you